Thank you. It is now time for member statements. The member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, as the government begins preparations for next year's budget, I rise in this House once again to underscore the need for a new courthouse in Halton Region. The current Halton Courthouse, which was built more than 50 years ago, is aging, overcrowded, unsafe, and inadequate to meet the needs of our rapidly growing region. I toured the courthouse on September 10, 2014, and participated in a town hall meeting with lawyers, judges, and other courthouse users later on that day. I told them I would do what I could to help. I've raised this issue in debate in this House and in question period. I've written to the Attorney General and have spoken to her many times. I even initiated a meeting with the Attorney General and all the Halton area MPPs on September the 8th. I also discussed the need with the Minister of Finance and the President of the Treasury Board last month, asking for their support. The Attorney General assures us that a new courthouse for Halton Region is a priority for her ministry. I thank her for the interest she has shown to date and urge her to keep pushing. The fall economic statements show that the government has allocated $243 million for justice infrastructure for this year. That's up almost $100 million from last year. Where is the Halton Courthouse in their long-term infrastructure plan? Halton Region needs a new courthouse. I am prepared to reach across the aisle and work with the other Halton area MPPs. Let's work together and get this done. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Windsor, Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. As you know, many, many members are signing Christmas cards this week. I didn't do that, so I'll have to make do with this. It was Christmas week, and the members were busy in their writings, as always. Only security and the legislative ghost walked the Queen's Park hallways. Spirits which were seen were captured for Clerk Duller and locked back up in the attic or down in the cellar. This month, the time seems to go by pretty fast, but there has been a sighting of a ghost of Christmas past. Dalton's been making a difference. At least, that's the title of a book he's been hawking. Might be better than a lump of coal in a liberal stocking. Patrick, north of Simcoe, has no time to dally. As west of Don Valley, Kathleen was seen at a Whitby Oshawa rally. <laughs> no, wait, please wait. I'm not done yet. I want to get in a plug for a poet laureate. <laughs> and I would like a final thought or two to be entered before I get the hook by my leader, Andrea, from Hamilton Center. Obviously, as a wordsmith, I'm no skilled artisan, but this message is non-political, non-partisan. Happy Hanukkah to some, season's greetings to all. It shouldn't be hard, Speaker, as in this hall, you can plainly see this has been your Christmas card from the member from Windsor to come see. <laughs> No truth to the rumor that you're applying for the uh, Poet Laureate. <laughs> member Stevens, the, the member from Mrs. 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 Sucker Brampton South. Mr. Speaker, on November 25th, the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry, Honorable Bill Morrow, and I had the opportunity to attend the Gurprab, Guru Nanak Dev Ji's birth celebrations at the Ontario Khalsa Darbar Sikh Temple in my great riding of Miss Sagha Brampton South. Born in 1469, Guru Nanak Dev Ji was ahead of his time, and he had an extraordinary insight. He proclaimed, there is but one God, the supreme truth, the ultimate reality, the creator without fear, without enemies, timeless in his image, self-created by his grace revealed. He believed in justice for all and values such as equality, compassion, tolerance, and universal love and respect. He rejected dreaded caste system and advocated for an inclusive and just society. Mr. Speaker, today we talk about gender parity. More than 500 years ago, Guru Nanak Dev Ji said, Soko Manda Akhiye Jit Jamme Rajan. Why should we call a woman inferior when it is she who gives birth to kings? Mr. Speaker, Guru Nanak Dev Ji's teachings 
and philosophy are more relevant in the times we live in. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, when is a Liberal government pocket fleecing tax not a tax? Well, when it's met head on with a wall of opposition and inbox exploding email campaigns that awaken government to the absurdity of their dream crushing tax plans. Speaker, this week we saw one of the quickest U turns in history when the Municipal Affairs Minister bowed to demands of the Municipal Land Transfer Tax Opposition motion tabled by my colleague from Leeds Grenville just two days before it was debated. It took a massive wave of e-opposition and weeks of pushing in this House to break through, but in the end, the Minister simply couldn't stand up to the outcry against the expansion of the Municipal Land Transfer Tax. The about faced by the Minister was a testament to the true democratic power of the people in rising up to oppose wrong-headed proposals that would crush the dreams of those looking to buy a home. It was a victory for all of those who stood against a proposal that would have seen people in my area of Kitchener-Waterloo forced to pay up to $10,000 to realize their dream. After refusing my colleague's repeated request to shelve any plan to expand the municipal land transfer tax, it was heartening to see the united voices of the people finally being heard when the minister climbed down only days before he would have been forced to defend what he obviously realized was a simply bad policy. So, Speaker, I want to recognize all who refused to sit silently while government dug further into our pockets. To the home builders, the real estate agents, Thank you. and those who raised their voices Thank in you. MPP and email box. Thank you. Member statements, the member from Nickel Belt. Well, we all know that Christmas is right around the corner, so I want to share with you my Christmas wish list for Nickel Belt. First, I wish that no train will derail, explode, and spew hundreds of liters of crude into any river, like happened in March 7 in my riding in Gogama. I wish that the oil would stop coming up the, the Makami River in Gogama. I wish that the people of Gogama would get support from their government to be fairly compensated, and I wish that somebody would tell me that it is safe to eat the fish. My fifth wish is that the Northeast continues to have a search and rescue helicopter based out of the Sudbury Airport. This way, we can ensure the safety of our hikers, cross-country skiers, snowmobilers, and I wish that if the government is doing a review of this decision, that the terms are referenced and minutes and who works on that is happening because the elf in my office have failed file freedom of access of information requests, but nothing is coming back. I also wish, Speaker, that the people living along Highway 69, where the blasting is happening for the widening of the highway, get fair compensation when their house gets destroyed by those blasting. And lastly, Speaker, I wish that the people of Wanapete First Nation don't have to drive to two riding and uh, hours and hours of drive uh, to uh, get service from their MPP and that they get moved back into the riding of Nickel Belt, like at the federal level where they belong. Thank you. Thank you Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I rise to actually deliver some positive news from Kitchener-Waterloo. Wow. Uh, as you know, in my riding of Kitchener Centre, the tech sector is flourishing. Today, I'd like to share with you news of a tech startup that's developed a remarkable innovation that's designed to keep kids and drivers safe on our roads. Sober Steering is the name of this company, and they've produced a new sensor technology that could make breathalyzers obsolete. And here's how it works. Sober Steering uses a biosensor in the steering wheel, which detects the driver's blood alcohol level. So to start the engine, you have to put your palms on the steering wheel. The sensor measures alcohol in your system through the skin. And if alcohol is detected, then the engine won't start. The company's chief operating officer, Catherine Carroll, says this technology could revolutionize the way that we monitor drinking and driving. Sober steering is currently targeted for school buses, but it could also be used on public transit, construction machinery, and so much more. I'm pleased to tell you that sober steering got off the ground in 2009 with an investment from this province. 
Researchers at the University of Waterloo helped to develop the technology. Currently, there are three school bus companies in Waterloo Region that are testing the system in a pilot project. This company, I believe, has a very bright future, and I'm so proud of the people who work there and all the other innovative businesses in my region that are developing creative solutions and creating jobs. Thank you. Thank you. Further members of statements, the member from Foreign Hill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'll continue the tradition with a little poem. The holiday of lights is here, good friends and happiness to share. Sweets with honey for us to eat, candles to light and friends to greet. One little candle, two little candles, all the way to eight little candles to celebrate the eight days of Hanukkah, which is going to be upon us this Sunday, December 6th at sundown, because the Jewish holidays pretty much always start at sundown the night before. Now, this little poem I've actually never heard before because it's not an English Hanukkah song, it's not a Yiddish Hanukkah song, it's not a Hebrew Hanukkah song, it is actually from a Spanish Hanukkah song, which is called Una Candelica. And so you can imagine how it goes Una Candelica, Due Candelica, and Candelica, we all know what uh, can be translated easily into candle. So what I want to remind everybody here is, yes, Hanukkah is being celebrated, but the Jewish community is not um, just here, obviously, in Ontario. It is found all over the world, in every culture and pretty much every language. So that means people will be singing Hanukkah songs in every language across the world, uh, starting December 6th this year, since it follows the Jewish cal calendar, which uh, makes adjustments, as we all know, and likes to confuse everybody, including the Jewish community. So Chag Sameach, Happy Hanukkah, and I'm looking forward to celebrating with people in Thornhill, many events going on all over the GTA, Ontario, Canada, and the world. Chag Sameach. Thank you. For the members, uh, statements the member from York Centre. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in this House to recognize the outstanding seniors who are this year's Ontario Senior Achievement Award recipients. Ontario acknowledged 21 outstanding seniors for their significant contribution to their communities and to the province. The Ontario Senior Achievements Award recognizes individuals who have made exceptional contributions to their community after the age of 65. It is the highest provincial honor for seniors. It is important to acknowledge that in 2015, for the first time, there are more seniors 65 and over than children under 15, both in Ontario and across Canada. In Ontario, there are currently more than 2 million seniors, and this number is expected to double in the next 25 years. The awards were presented at a Queen's Park ceremony by the Honourable Elizabeth Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, and the Honourable Mario Sergio, the Minister responsible for Seniors Affairs. I'd like to highlight a recipient of the awards who is my constituent from York Centre. Ekaterina Latkina uh, is an active volunteer with the Jewish Russian Community Centre. Uh, she is responsible for the mailing uh, operations of the organization, making sure that thousands of letters, birthday greetings, invitations, and tax receipts are prepared, signed, and delivered on time. As Ontarians, we should take aspiration, inspiration from these seniors who have made such diverse contributions to their communities. They are a constant reminder that life is long and that no matter the age, the potential to bring about positive change is always possible. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker, and it's my pleasure to honour Patricia Hung today, a constituent of Beaches, East York, and the first ever Parkview Hills Citizen of the Year. Now, the Parkview Hills community has represented residents of Parkville Hills in the northwest corner of my riding for the past 25 years. And until just a few weeks ago, it was headed up by my good friend Justin Van Dett for the last seven years. Before exiting as the president, he launched the Parkview Hills Citizen of the Year Award and also helped kick off a $25,000 campaign for the Toronto East General Hospital, which, as you may have heard recently, has changed its name to the Michael Guerin Hospital as a result of a $50 million donation by the family to the hospital. Now, so congratulations, Justin, on your very successful tenure as the president, and we're glad that you're staying on the board. And I also want to best wishes to Leanne Reed, the new association president, and the board. But let's just talk briefly about Patricia. 
a self-declared do-gooder. She's a police officer, an author, an inspirational speaker, and a tireless volunteer who has been helping our community for decades. But after the tragic loss of her daughter, Stephanie, in 2008, Patricia began the healing process by helping others. From holding workshops, sitting on victim adversary committees, to contributing to her blog, The Joy in the Aftermath, Patricia has been helping families who have been impacted by tragedy, finding hope. In 2012, she also launched Quality Care Employment Agency, a volunteer organization which recruits live-in caregivers for children, the disabled, and seniors. So please join me in congratulating Patricia on her well-deserved award, Parkview Citizen of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you to um, all of the members who have made statements today. It's now time for